Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're going to have a look at the first of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip around Sweden. So I went out to uh, Blekinge, also to uh, Kalmar as well, and to Erland. So I brought back a few local beers from all of those areas. So you'll see those appearing over the next couple of videos. For this one though, we're going to return to a brewery that I introduced you to maybe like two, three years ago, something like that. And I really quite enjoyed the last beer that I had from them so I'm really curious to see how this one turns out because it's one of their newer ones. So for this review we are going to return to Kalmar and do my second review from Engu Quartersbrugery and this one is the Engu Blå Berliner which obviously as the name would tell you if you're a Swedish speaker it is a blueberry Berliner Weiss. So I do enjoy a nice Berliner Weiss. They had um they had about three different kinds actually, and you know, blueberries, I've always enjoyed blueberry juice, I always like blueberries, one of my favourite fruits, so this is just the one out of the three that I really quite fancy trying. One of the interesting things about this beer as well is that it's 3.6%. Now for those of you watching outside of Sweden, um, if a beer is 3.5% and below, it can be sold in supermarkets as a folk soul. But if it's a little bit more than that, it is sold as a star cool. So I'm kind of curious as to why um, they've made it 3.6%. I'm wondering if that is just to get it into, say, Stimble Agate, or if there is like a folk soul version of this, which is 3.5% that they can sell in the supermarkets as well. It's a bit strange that they have to, uh, that perhaps they have to brew two different batches. I don't know if you can sell folk soul in. Um, in Seistembalaga. I know they sell no alcohol beers like Z or even very very low alcohol beers but I'd be surprised if they, they wouldn't sell a 3.5% one so do let me know in the comments section about that below if you're watching from uh from Sweden, of course, that would be interesting to know because that's it's just something that I thought of when I was going to review this beer. But anyway, it would be cool to return to this brewery. The last beer I reviewed from these guys, I think, was called like Kala Teeters or something, but it was a Dunkel lager and it was pretty nice from what I remember. So hopefully, this is another beer that follows in the same light, and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews, then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Engu Quartos Brewery before. No doubt I'll add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Engu Quartos Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So Engu Quartos Brewery, as I mentioned to you earlier, are based in Kalmar, which is part of Kalmar County, but this area is also home to, uh, it's basically the historic province of Småland and this is in the southeastern part of Sweden. If you know the big long island, the very thin one, Öland, which literally translates into English as island land, which I thought was quite funny, um, but Kalmar is pretty much right on the, the middle part of this island, just across the water, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, on the mainland, though, just to be clear. But this brewery was founded back in 2010 by Kalmar local Johan Hawkinson, who'd been home brewing since 1993. But the brewery was originally based in an old farmhouse in the Engu district of Kalmar, which is where the brewery takes its name from. But this used to be home to a company called Enge Blomqvist Tunbindery, which used to produce casks and kegs for local breweries and bars around the Kalmar area. But this company went out of business in 1968, and they after the building was used simply as a storage warehouse, but the building underwent extensive renovations in 2009 and 2010 to become the, the brewery and it was equipped with a 1600 litre copper clad brew kit from Austria and it had fermentation uh, tanks, if you like, on the next floor up. But this facility gave Engu Quartos Brewery an annual output of around 100,000 litres of beer per year. But in 2016 though they moved to their new premises and this is the old Gamax factory, uh, factory sorry, in Paulhelms Gatan, which you actually, we actually actually drove right past this as we came off the motorway, you can see it from the road, but this gives them an annual output of around 500,000 litres of beer per year and it also means that their beers can be distributed throughout the whole of Sweden, so you can now order these beers all the way throughout, uh, throughout the country. 
Um, but over the last few years, they've basically been attending different beer festivals. I think recently they attended one in Belarus, because Belarus is starting to open up a little bit. Don't need visas to go there, from what I understand now. Um, but as of November 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 30 different types of beers. And they seem to have a few different styles. I tried their IPA when I was with a friend in a bar in Kalmar, and um, it was pretty nice, actually. I'll need to see if I can order that and review it for you at some point. There was the Prima Lager as well, which was quite nice, and they also... So have um, they've also got a few different Berliner Weisses, like I was mentioning to you earlier. But yeah, an interesting brewery, and I would say that Kalmar is a very pretty city as well. It's got a good bit of historic. Um it's got a good bit of history behind it actually, but Kalmar became a less kind of important city to Sweden nationally after there was a war between the Swedes and the Danes, was it around the 1780s or something like that? Um, but Kalmar was a very, very important city before then, it was the centre of a lot of trade and things, but I think after um, there was a treaty signed and then Kalmar I think became you know significantly less important to the overall country after that. But it's a beautiful place to go and visit, Öland is very pretty as well, and you've all seen me review a few different beers from Öland as well which will be quite cool but yeah that's all you really need to know about Engu Quartersburg for just now let's go and have a little taste of this beer and see how we get on so um yeah there you can see there's a little I don't know if it's meant to be a bear or like a it looks a little bit like Jerry going off his nut from Tom from Tom and Jerry it really reminded me of that a bit of a drunk Jerry kind of smashing up the town and things like that um it almost yeah it looks it's like the you can see the Brandenburg Gate behind that as well. I was thinking, was that something in Kalmar? And then, no, saw the horses. And it would make sense when it's uh, Blor Berlina. I saw someone on Untapped actually had said that this meant like blueberry lines, but obviously, you know, Ber uh, Berlin. I don't know how you spell Berlin in Swedish actually, because I would always spell it with the English. But Blobear, blueberries, and Berlina. So obviously, just a play on words, as is the thing with Engel. So, yeah, quite clever. But, um, yeah, you know, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. And then just a plain. Fabulous purple bottle cap on this one. So without further ado, we will get this one out and we will get on with the tasting there. Oh, and actually, I do like that as well. Kein Reinheitsgebot, um, which basically means not not Reinheitsgebot or no Reinheitsgebot. So yeah, Berliner Weisses and um, Gozes rather are two of the few German styles of beer. Is the Lichtenheiner one as well? Um, but those are two of the few styles of beer that are not brewed according to the Reinheitsgebot in Germany. So, yeah, the German purity law. Basically, malt, hops, water and yeast is all you're allowed in beer, according to that. So, um, yeah, interesting point there. But, yeah, as you can see with this one, and as you kind of expect from Berliner Weiss, you can always get these things being quite fabulous colours. I love colours, and that was one of the main reasons I studied chemistry, because you got to make pretty colours and you know, blow shit up actually. But yeah, that was, <laughs> you know, you always get good colours and nice colours out of these, um, these Berliner Weisses. This one, it always surprises me with blueberry ones because blueberries obviously are very, uh, you know, a really dark sort of navy colour, but they always come out like this and more sort of pinkish and like red winey sort of coloured. Maroon is probably the the best colour, like Hearts Football Club back in Scotland. It's a little bit of a kind of maroon colour, this beer. If I hold it up to the light, it is very hazy, as you would expect. You can see a little bit of light coming through there. There's a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say pinkish fawn head in this one. But, you know, overall, it looks um, it looks pretty nice. So, yeah, looks pretty good. So, um, yeah, kind of what you would expect. Nothing overly surprising about this one. As I say, just be aware that Berliner Weisses, you'll get some very fabulous colours out of these things. So let's take a look at the aroma and see how we get on. That smells really nice, actually. Um, so straight away, you're going to come across this um, the, the nice juicy blueberries coming out of this. Um, and you know, you'd expect that. It's a blueberry Berliner Weiss. I mean, come on. But um, underneath, you get a nice sort of wheaty, white, bready sort of thing. It comes across as very, very smooth, actually. But a lovely kind of white, bready, wheaty smoothness in there. There's almost a little bit of a kind of New Englandy sort of... When I've talked about, for example, the, the heady topper, it's almost got a little bit of a slightly farmhousey vibe to it, this beer, that sort of vegetal, herbal, kind of almost grainy type thing, to be honest with you. You can really, um, you can really pick that out in this beer. Um, you can pick that out there just sitting in the... Um, underneath it, but I mean, it, it's quite well balanced between the wheat and the... Um, between the wheat and the, the fruit side of this beer. There's a little bit of a kind of slightly grassy, hoppy note to this one. I mean, you do, you are, I don't know how many breweries 
do it now, but the German ones will always use a little bit of like Hallertau or Tettnanger hops just to give you that light grassiness, and I always like that, but I think a lot of foreign breweries that do this style, because it is becoming very, very popular um, throughout the world actually, but um, a lot of breweries don't tend to use hops in them, they just do the malt base and uh, and put the fruit in, so I'm curious to, to know, I would be curious to know whether they've used hops in this, but you definitely pick up a little hint of a grassy kind of floral thing to this one, juicy blueberries coming in behind it, and then you've got the nice smooth wheaty white bready quality in there with a little bit of that almost farmhousey and um, sort of old school New England IPA sort of feel to it, a little bit like Hedy Topper, I've talked about this in various videos recently. Um, so yeah, it does have a little bit of a farmhousey edge to it, to be honest. So that's kind of interesting. But then again, if this started off as a sort of almost farmhouse brewery, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So um, yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma this one. But it comes across as very juicy, very smooth, a little bit old schooly and New Englandy, um, and also a little bit um, kind of grassy and things too. So kind of everything you'd expect. But the um, New England sort of thing does give you a little bit of a quirkiness to the beer. So yeah, let's take a look at this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Blue Berliner, a blueberry uh, Berliner Weisse from at 3.6% from Engel Quartus, er, Engel Quartus Brewery, not Engel Quartus Brewery, in Kalmar over on the east, the southeast coast of Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. That's really pretty nice. Um, I mean, I'm trying to remember. With a normal, I think a normal Berliner Weiss, most German beers are like four point five five percent. Um, so this one, it is fair to say, this is a little bit lighter in alcohol than the ones that you would get from Germany. And I mean, break it to the other brewery to look at for these. And I think usually they do theirs around sort of four and a half. Uh, some I think yeah four and a half five percent sometimes four I think as well, um, so yeah we should, we should say this one is a little bit lower in alcohol but I tell you something it's not really it's not really lacking in flavour because of that um, you know there are some styles I think that come out really well with um, the higher alcohol but you know with a lot of the sour beers you can get the same level of flavour out of them without making them high and I guess there's a big market for that as well you do want beers. Um, you want beers that are a bit lower in alcohol. You don't want to be drinking, you know, a big heavy imperial stout or a big beast of a an IPA all the time, do you? You do want things that are just nice and light and sessionable that aren't going to leave you smashed for work the next day, you know. But yeah, this is a really nice and easy drinking Berliner Weiss actually. The sort of New England farmhousey kind of thing I was talking about in that. I would definitely say that that is a lot less pronounced um, than the aroma would have you believe. It's, it's a lot more subtle actually. But I mean this is a nice beer. I wouldn't hesitate to drink that again. I think, I can't remember what the other two Berliner Weisses were that they had. But as I say this is just the one that caught my eye. But I think on the basis of this one I would be keen to have a go at the other two. And their IPA, like I said, I tried that in the pub with my uh, with my friend the Lila Pubin in um, in in uh, Kalmar, which is probably the best beer pub actually that's in the town, um, and it was it was nice. I was impressed with it. So I need to see if I can uh, get a bottle of that to review. But this is th this one definitely makes me interested to try a few of the other beers, because um, as I say, it's a brewery that I've only encountered once so far. But um, yeah, so let's let's break the flavour of this one down then. Middle of your palate, you can feel that nice white bready wheaty, pardon me, kind of quality, just blanket in the middle of your tongue. What you'll find as well is it actually gets a little bit sweeter the further that you go into the aftertaste too. Um, you've also got a nice little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness. There is a teeny bit of a biscuity sweetness in the middle of your palate too. But you will find as you go through this beer and the flavour evolves a little bit, you do get a little touch of that sort of slightly farmhousey, vegetal, herbally kind of thing. There is a teeny bit of that in the middle of your palate as well. And it's almost just like... It's like the wheat blankets it, you have a little circle, a slightly bigger circle that kind of has that farmhousey vibe and then if you go to the very centre of your tongue it's got a little bit more of the kind of biscuity note to it. Back corners of the palate you have a little bit of a, um, how do you say, you've got a little bit of a 
a slight earthiness, you know, I think there is a little bit of German hop in here, you've got a little bit of that light earthiness that you would expect of Haller Tower St. Nyer. As you come further forward, you can feel a little bit of the floral quality there, and it's a bit lighter and grassy around the front curve of the tongue as well. But the thing you have to remember is when you add fruit into beer, it suppresses a lot of the... Um, the, the green side of the hops and it takes away some of the IBUs and you really can feel the blueberries, the juiciness of the blueberries just around the kind of front edge of your tongue there as well and that's probably one of the reasons why you kind of can get away with uh, with not adding hops to this style from what I understand but um, the, fl the way the flavour in this one goes together is, is really quite nice But yeah, one of the things I would say about this beer as well is I noticed that on Untapped it didn't have, you know, all that high a rating, which I thought was, you know, going by the flavour of the beer, that's it's kind of quite surprising. Um, it is a little bit different, granted, to some of the other Berlin advices that I've had, but I think they've done a good job of this. I mean, I would disagree with the Untapped rating on this one. I think it should be rated a little bit higher than it is, but ratings aren't everything, and, you know, beer's always subjective. I would say, but that, that little quirkiness that it has, a little bit of that farmhousey thing in the middle of the palate, that is the quirkiness that this beer has. The sour character that this beer has as well, you can feel that it comes in right behind the front curve of your tongue, so you do have a degree of that lemony, kind of citricky sort of thing that um, you always get from sour beers. But the juiciness of the blueberries, the further you go into the aftertaste, <clears throat> The juiciness of the blueberries really comes out and maybe as the flavour evolves you would start to think there's a little bit of like a blackberry, black curranty sort of figgy kind of thing as well. A little bit of a sort of candy berryish fruit but mainly it is of course the blueberries which is what you'd expect. But to me this is one of these beers that is, you know, it's not surprising if you know this style. This beer isn't particularly surprising. It does have a little bit of quirkiness to it because of that slightly farmhousey vibe that it has. But um, it's really, it's a very, very solid take on the Berliner Weisse. So, you know, you just have to say, well done to uh, to Engu Quartusbergery for this one. I think it's a nice beer. Nothing surprising with the style, just a little touch quirky. Um, but, you know, if you enjoy these kind of beers, if you like uh, Brickeriet, for example, or you like some of the sour stuff that Temple does, who else is there? Dugas have got a good few sour beers. To me, this one, you know, it really wouldn't look out of place next to those. So, yeah, give it a go and just see what you think. I'm not sure how widely available this beer is outside of Sweden these days, but um, if, and if you are drinking it from outside of Sweden, let me know where in the comments section below. It'd be cool to know where these beers are going. Um, but yeah, solid Berliner Weisse in terms of its, its flavours and stuff. I definitely need to try some of the other ones, actually. Um, so in terms of the, the mouthfeel then... Um, Yeah, I mean, mid-bodied beer, carbonation smooth in this one. It's actually a little bit oily, this. This is, I think, one of the more oily um, Berliner Weisses that I've come across. But, you know, it does. It, I don't think that affects it, really. Um, but it definitely feels a little bit more oily to me. It does have a good degree of smoothness as well. Um, the malt base, like I said, is quite smooth. There is a little bit of dryness to it, and that's when you start to get those kind of uh, herbally, vegetally kind of things, the sort of New Englandy farmhouse type vibe to the beer. A um, little touch of sweetness in there as well. If we're talking IBUs with this beer on the hoppy side of things, I think you're talking maybe, what, 15, 20, something like that. Not a lot out of this beer at all though. Um, and you've got a lovely juicy fruity quality to this one. In terms of the sourness as well, um, it's quite sharp when you take it in first time but it really mellows out a little bit the more that your mouth adjusts to this beer. But overall, a really nice Berliner Weisse, and it was definitely cool to try another beer from these guys after quite a little while. So I hope you've enjoyed my take on this one. It's been cool to visit this brewery again after quite a bit of time, and I'll need to see if I can review a few others from them as well. But yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Engel Kvartus Bregory as well. I'm sure I'll return to these guys at some point hopefully in the fairly near future but um, make sure you check out this beer the Engel Blue Berliner a 3.6% Blueberry Berliner Weiss from Engel Quartus Bregory over in Kalmar which is a very pretty city like I said and do make sure if you go there you go and check out Uland as well take a car, rent it, drive around really lovely part of Sweden so yeah until the next time Slange just now and I'll catch you guys soon Slange, school, make sure you check out this beer cheers